Hey, welcome to the classroom. Today we're talking about tools, part three. We're going to discuss rods, reels, and line. You always want to use the best tool for the job. That is especially true when discussing fishing equipment. When it comes to fishing rods and reels and lines, we have a lot of choices. We have two ways to present our lures, casting and trolling. Many fishermen think they can use the same rod and reel for both casting and trolling. For the best control, we need to have a separate rod and reel for casting and for trolling. There are many, many different styles of casting rods available. We'll discuss the main characteristics that will handle most of the situations we come across. A good all-around casting rod will be 5.5 to 6.5 feet in length. The action should be stiff. Many fishermen select a rod that is more like a noodle or buggy whip. You will have much better control with a rod that is stiff with a lot of backbone. The tip of the rod should have some flexibility, but the rest of the rod should be stiff. This type of casting rod will handle most situations we are faced with. A bait casting reel will handle most all situations we come across. Most all the reels on the market are good and it just comes down to personal preference. One of the more important things that is often overlooked is keeping your spool full of line. Not having enough line spooled up will give you loss in speed control when reeling. A low spool will also make casting more difficult. There are many different choices for casting line. The selection of casting line is more of a personal choice or preference. I've tried them all and the one type of line that will give you the best all around control is usually a good stiff monofilament line. 12 to 15 pounds will handle most situations. Lighter pound may result in a loss of control and tackle. When selecting a trolling rod, we're looking for a tough rugged rod. Not that long and not that limber. A good trolling rod will be stiff. A rod that is limber and whippy will not give you much control or feel. With a limber rod for trolling, you will lose a lot of tackle and a lot of fish. A rod with stiff action will give you much better control and feel. Usually the shorter rod will be easier to handle. A rod that is 4.5 to 5.5 feet is usually preferred and will handle most situations. A good trolling reel will be a level wind bait caster, similar to a light saltwater reel. Just like casting reel, we should keep the spool fairly full with line. Some of the spools can have a large capacity, so putting a backing on it would be used in those cases. When selecting a trolling line, you should avoid any line that is soft and stretchy. A line that is too soft and stretchy will not give you any feel or control. The best monofilament trolling line that is available is No Bow produced by Buck Bates. It was made exclusively for trolling. It is a stiff, low-stretched line and is color-coded every 10 yards so exact line length can be maintained easily. The newer braided lines can make a good trolling line as they are very low stretch. This line has its advantages and disadvantages. The diameter of these lines are much smaller than monofilament. You can achieve good depth control at times, but the small diameter of these lines can result in more foul lures and other problems. If you're trolling a hard bottom such as rocks, the line can weaken quickly and break. You'll need to check the line often and use a heavy leader material. To achieve greater depths while trolling, wire line can be used. The best wire line is a single strand stainless steel line. It's hard to find and once again, buck baits offer this wire trolling line. Great care must be used when trolling with wire line. In future classroom sessions, we'll discuss in detail how to troll with wire line. For more information on this classroom subject, as well as any others, check out structurefishing.com slash education.